Hello everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to my YouTube channel this week. I hope you guys had an amazing Easter weekend. Today I want to teach you a little bit about why you need to break a cycle, not try to repair the one that you're in currently with a narcissist. This video can actually apply to people who are not narcissists and if you've been following on my channel, you should know that I actually don't care if the person is a narcissist or if they're just not self-aware or if they're an amazing person, they're just not meant for you. They're just not your person right now at this point in time. This can apply to groups of people like work, family, any kind of thing like that. Uh, and the reason for this is because we should stop settling for treatment that is so beneath what we were created to experience on this planet. A lot of people actually delay their their destinies because they are messing around with stuff that should have been broken off, should have been left behind a long time ago. So um, really quickly, my PhD is in conflict analysis and resolution. I believe very strongly that people need to have good conflict resolution skills. This is a life skill, uh, an asset that you need to develop while you are on this planet because you're going to have conflict. Uh, no matter what, right? And, and conflict is not a negative thing. It's actually a very healthy thing for relationships to go through as long as you know how to navigate that correctly. So let's get into what I want to talk about today. First of all, let me just draw you a little uh, a little thing. Again, my skill set is not in drawing, but let's check this out if we can here. Here we are going about life within a relationship. There's ups and downs, there's bumps. And then it comes to meeting a narcissist. You're going to have a huge increase. This is the love bombing stage, followed by a huge decrease. This is the devaluation stage. From this, you're going to experience a real low, all right, during that devaluation stage. This is now the discard stage, but you're getting over it. Things are going to start leveling off here. They're going to start doing the hoovering stage, but you're somewhat continuing on until they come back into your life, right? And that's going to be followed by a very big bump in love bombing, followed by the devaluation stage again, right? And so on and so forth. I want to talk to you about this hole that is left right there. What most people try to do is... They try to fill it back up, right, with the narcissist or with the person that they just had this conflict with. And so they do some activities, they do some things, they share some words, they do some stuff that is meant to fill in this hole that has been left. But you'll notice here that things never actually level out. So that hole is not filled up. That hole is partially filled up, but as you'll notice, that was the previous one and we're starting another cycle of building another hole, right? The love bombing stage, which is never as high as the, as the original one was. The narcissist knows exactly what they're doing when they go through these phases of narcissistic abuse. And so your love bombing stage is never as high as the previous one was, but it's still going to be followed by the devaluation stage, the discard stage, and then eventually the hoovering stage. So what this is doing is leaving a bunch of deficits in this person who's experiencing narcissistic abuse life, right? All of these deficits. And this is why I teach my clients to keep a short account of what's happening internal to them. If you don't do that, what you're going to try to do is fill in those holes, right? All the holes that were left along as we were going, but we never break this cycle, Breaking this cycle is key to actually filling in all of those deficits that have been left within us as we've experienced narcissistic abuse. Or again, this could just be not the not the time for you to be in relationship with a certain person or a certain place or whatever your situation may be. Doesn't need to be a narcissist, but for the sake of this video, I'm just using that as an example. When you start to fill in these deficits, what you'll notice is you're going to have these conversations with yourself like, I wish I would have said this, or I wish I would have had stronger boundaries around this, or I should have been doing X, Y, and Z, okay? Those things are internal to you. Only you can actually fill up these deficits that have been left, even though the narcissist is the one who dug these holes. The reason was because they had access to you. And if you don't know how to fill up those deficits for yourself, 
you're going to continue to allow the narcissist to keep digging these holes throughout your life. Okay, the more isolated you're going to be, the more you're going to find yourself losing friends, family, connections to, you know, your church, your work, your your children, your finances. Everything is going to continue to be having these deficits because the narcissist knows what they're doing. And one of the greatest lies that people come into agreement with is that they don't know what they're doing and they can't help it and that this is, you know, a, a cause because there's trauma and, and now it's your responsibility to somehow undo or fix what that person's deficit is. And that's a lie. It's not true. But it is your responsibility to fix the deficits that have been left in your life, in your heart. So when you keep a short account of what is actually going on, right, I, I need to learn how to set boundaries. I need to learn how to speak up or defend myself better. I need to learn how to have more of an emotional uh, barrier between myself and this person or between myself and this place, right? When you can keep those short accounts with yourself, you can start to actually repair these deficits and furthermore, ensure that we don't continue going down the cycle, but the cycle has to be broken in order for the repair to happen. You cannot repair while you're in the middle of a cycle like this. It's impossible to do. All of your holes are going to be left at different you know, degrees of being filled back in until you can actually break the cycle, repair what has happened in that cycle, and use that momentum to start building a new cycle altogether. That's the only way to do this. Okay, lots of people will spend their lives, their entire lives, doing this thing of trying to play catch up, of filling in the holes that were left back here while we're still perpetuating the abuse cycles that are, are going on right now. It doesn't work that way. You have to cut off this cycle from continuing in order to repair the things that have happened to you in the past and have a very clear, uh, clear mind clear vision of what you want your future to look like, okay, and start to build the cycle moving forward for that. One of the things that I also want to show you is how these cycles are formed in the first place. This is the way a cycle works. We have 90% of the cycle underneath the conscious awareness line. If this line is what you're consciously aware of, the majority of the cycle is perpetuated by something that you cannot see. And this is important to know because when you start to recognize that not one more podcast or one more book or one more session with your therapist or one more class on what is narcissism, none of, all of these things are addressing the conscious part of your mind and not the non-conscious part, which is 90% of what's perpetuating this cycle. This is why it doesn't work to go to... To, to counseling one more time or to listen to one more podcast or read one more book or do one more thing that's going to help break this cycle because you're not actually addressing the things that could be breaking the cycle, which is your non-conscious awareness. The reasons and causes for why this cycle is established in the first place is non-conscious. You need to bring the non-conscious to your conscious mind, which includes your values, your belief systems, and the knowledge in your heart. If you've been following my YouTube channel for any amount of time, you'll know that everything I do is faith-based. And one of the reasons for this is because spiritual principles govern this natural world that we live in. So until you understand that there's a reason why the word says that in, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Not as he thinks in his head, not as he thinks he thinks he is in his mind, right? It's in your heart. It's the non-conscious. And your non-conscious world is reflecting back to you what you believe in your outer world. And until you understand that everything is just a reflection to you so that you can start to understand and govern your world better, you're still going to be fighting with, okay, I need to understand how the narcissist is doing this or why the narcissist is doing that, as opposed to learning why am I participating in this cycle in the first place? What are the actual belief systems I have about myself, about God, about my creator, about the people that are in my life that are perpetuating this cycle? A lot of people will start putting, outsourcing their reasonings, right? God wants to teach me a lesson. God wants me to have this relationship in order to help the narcissist. 
Um, the narcissist needs me to save them because they didn't receive love as a child because their mom or dad did X, Y, and Z. All of this is just reasoning that you're coming up in your conscious mind that is reflective of what you truly believe in your non-conscious. Okay, and until you can correct that and start pulling that to the surface, you're going to forever try to be filling in these holes that have been left in the past while more holes are being filled up right? There's still more holes being dug by the narcissist because we're still in this cycle. And until you can actually stop the cycle, it's not going to do, you're still, you're going to forever be in this, in this cycle of having these holes dug in your life. It's the reason why you can divorce that person that you're with right now, but your next marriage is going to be with a narcissist until you do the work and you break the cycle for real. And you fill in those holes for real so that you're a whole human. You are a complete being. And until you understand that you're in control of your life, you get to design it. Okay, you get to partner with the divine design or you get to choose to not do that. It's up to you because you were created in the image of the creator to create in the image of the creator. And if your life isn't looking like the image of the creator, we have to stop and see where am I partnering with this in my non-conscious beliefs? Where's the reason that that this is not looking like what I think my life should be? Why do I feel like I'm destined to do more and I can't ever seem to do it? That has to do with your non-conscious beliefs. So when you get into the habit of keeping these short accounts with yourself, of see, see, looking back on your day and seeing the places where, hey, I didn't actually really like the way I showed up for that thing. Why did I show up that way? How come I had this conversation in this manner instead of in this manner, which would feel more authentic to me? What's the reason that's keeping me from actually shifting this cycle? What am I afraid of, right? Fear is always an invitation to freedom. And it's really important that we look at it that way. Otherwise, we're, we're always going to be pushing the things that we don't want to look at into the shadows. And guess what? They, they grow there. They grow bigger, they grow stronger, and they take up more space in our hearts, in our non-conscious belief system, than if we actually pull them to the front and we sit down and have a real, real look at what, what, what they represent to us and why we're allowing them space in our non-conscious minds and power to keep fueling these cycles that we want to break. When I work with clients, it's always important to help them remember what is their what are their their actual dreams? Because so often we'll settle for less and less and less. And we're, we're going to say something like, I just want to get rid of the narcissist. I just want peace. I just want to get out. That's escapism. And by the way, escaping, try to, trying to escape the cycle is giving it more power. When you can actually look at this cycle and say, I'm in control of you, right? You're not happening to me, but I'm happening to you. I'm happening to this cycle now. I'm showing up in my full, uh, my full authenticity and my full, full authority, and I'm ready to make a shift now. Until we can actually do that, right, and show up in that manner, we're going to be trying to escape this cycle, which is giving it more fuel. It's actually fueling it to keep happening. And that's why you'll often see people who have disasters in one area of their life having multiple disasters, because it's it's not just the marriage. It's not just their health. It's not just you know, they're, they lost their job or some other thing. It's multiple things because they have been fueling these cycles with their non-conscious belief systems. And until we see, hey, this devastation that's happening around me is actually helping to pull away the false security, the false understanding that I thought I had about this until we look at it through that way of like, this is actually helping me. And I'm happening to these things now. Now it's time for me to show up how I was truly created and have the life that I was destined to have, until we show up in that manner, we're going to continuously be outsourcing responsibility for our lives, which means that we have no ability to actually step in and right the wrongs. I have a video on blame and responsibility that I'm linking in the description of this video, and I want you to go watch that one next because it's really important you understand the difference between blame and responsibility and that we show up ready to take responsibility 100% for our actions and thoughts and beliefs and 0% for the narcissist's behaviors, actions, and beliefs. That is not your responsibility. And this is a codependent mechanism that is developed by saying, okay, I need to step in and take responsibility for what they're doing 
because I need to keep this facade. That's why codependents and narcissists go together is because they both want to have this appearance of everything is good, everything is perfect, it'll all work itself out. And it's not true. And so again, I have videos why where I talk about why you're an energetic match for the narcissist. I know that that ruffles a lot of feathers, but I'm here to help you actually break free of this cycle so that you don't keep perpetuating it, so that you don't teach it to your children and keep leaving this generational thing going on where no matter what you do, you keep getting the same thing. And until you understand, it's because you're reaping what's actually sown in your heart, your non-conscious. Until you understand that that's actually what's going on here, it's going to be very difficult to break it because you keep outsourcing the responsibility of why this cycle is continuing to somebody else, to your parents, to the narcissist, to your church, to your therapist. And I want to help you actually break free of that by understanding there's a reason why you're with a narcissist. There's a reason why you continuously settle for less than what is actually written about you in in your book of life. And the reason for that is has to do with your belief system. It's your non-conscious belief system. And so if you're ready to actually break free from this cycle once and for all, I want you to shoot me a text with the word detox in it to 512-677-9322 and see if you're a good fit to qualify to join my narcissistic detox intensive. I guarantee my work because I believe that your time, which is your most valuable currency, is worth something more than your money. I will guarantee your money be refunded if it wasn't worth your time. And so I want you to see if you qualify to join that, if you are truly ready to break this cycle. If you take away from nothing else from this video, I want you to start making a true accountability uh, session with yourself. Every day you should be having this conversation with yourself. Did I show up how I know I'm supposed to show up? Did I show up authentically today? Not the, not the way my parents think I should show up, my spouse thinks I should show up, my boss thinks I should show up, but was I authentic to who I am today? So number one, do that. And number two, recognize that you are here to happen to, to life. Life isn't happening to you. You are showing up, encountering these cycles, breaking these things. And you also hold the key to filling in those deficits that were left by the narcissist or by any other uh, encounter that you may have had in your life. And so I want you to recognize your true power and that you really are such a powerful person and you can have a new life any day that you decide to show up differently. Make sure you check out my video on blame and responsibility after this one and I'll see you in my next video.